When the darkness falls in the town of Paulding, the mysterious light appears. Back then there was a lot of different stories about it, but it boiled down to being uh, the end of a train, a caboose light uh, going off in the distance, ghost of a train. Yeah. That's more or less what it boiled down to being that one there, but I've heard it to be in other stories too. Sightings of the light have been reported for decades. While most claim the first sighting was in the 1960s, some others believe it was spotted even sooner. My cousin's husband, Don, uh, they've been coming here quite a while and I've known quite other people who come here. Some call it a spirit, others swamp gas, and skeptics identify the optical phenomenon as something else. But what exactly is the cause of the beaming light over the valley? We took somebody with, uh, we took their pickup truck and had them set up the adoptive highway sign that we saw. And uh, they turned on their hazards and flashed their brights. Back then, I don't know if it's true right now, but there was no cell service here. So we couldn't contact, but we kind of... At dusk, you could see the car. While headlights were determined to be the most probable, other theories were also addressed. We have all these valleys here, mm -hmm. and especially early in the uh, the summer, it's very cold in those valleys. It never really qu quite warms up until about this time of year. So you have cold air, and then if you have a nice, hot, warm day, uh, what will happen is that they'll have a warm layer on top of a cold layer, and then when the sun sets, then you have a cold layer in between it. So you have a sandwich effect, and that can create an optical duct. Okay. And one of the things we've observed but never recorded is that just over the horizon, uh, there, are, there used to be at least some blinking red um, lights from a radio tower. Okay. And those would, be a vi those would be visible just before sundown and right after sundown, and then they'd disappear. The original experiment was conducted back in 2010, but was reorganized this week for a special yeah. television program. So they contacted me in May or June um, and wanted to know if they could come out. Although these findings vary, not everyone believes the results. Yeah, sometimes it's, you know, brighter than others, but um, yeah, it's always been in the distance and very eerie looking to me. The light has become an international phenomenon with visitors coming from all over the world to get a glimpse. It's a quite popular place. It still is. I mean, you just look around. There's there's never a lack of traffic back here. The town of Paulding has drawn in various TV crews throughout the years, including a recent one working on an undisclosed special around the light. Onlookers come almost every night to get a peek of the light, some even camping out for hours. Others continue to bring their families and share the experience. Despite the ambiguity of the underlying truth behind the light, the experiments conducted on site have been quite the learning experience. It is kind of an important part of the outreach that we do as Michigan Tech and as scientists is to say, you know, we're not saying that you have to believe any one thing. We're just saying we're just providing the evidence and hoping that uh, that you can find something interesting in it. The true mystery behind the light, though, lies in the eye of the beholder. Melanie Palmer reporting for ABC 10 and CW5 in Paulding.